very sad news to share. Bob Beckel, one of our former co-hosts on The Five, has passed away. He was 73. Bob was one of a kind, a political legend, and a great friend to many of us at Fox and at this table. We will miss him dearly. Here's a look back at some of his most memorable moments on The Five. Hey, I'm Bob Becker. Welcome to The Five. You can hear me. We're I know you can. Lure Go Bob to your room, Becker. Bob. Are, are, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, are you are you kidding me? This is the last time I'm ever going to talk about Benghazi. I'll never talk about it. And I hope every other patriotic American joins with me. Oh, oh, please. All right. Please. Well, I, I think I'm glad to hear that. So you can't make all liberals the same way on everything. We're not. But you are. No, you're not. You wackos are all the same. You are. See, the thing is, I call you we a just liberal, had a big you call me a wacko. Fight. Bob has gotten much nicer over the last month or two. That's, that's because your lawyer yesterday. threatened to sue me, Don. Your book just gave me the incentive <laughs> to write my own book. Excellent. Uh, and here it is. If you take a look at this, it's called The Hate of Joy. When I'm in a hurry and I want my Twinkie, I will drink my Twinkie. Oh, my Bob or just Twinkie. <laughs> Bob just drank the whole thing. Now that was brilliant on your part. If they don't hit me on the first throw, they're wusses, they're uncoordinated, they're unathletic, and of course they're Republicans. They, oh, another one. Oh, we missed it again. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. We're straight ahead. Are we still on the air? This is the end of an era. <laughs> Moses Brands, the maker of Twinkie, <laughs> and Wonder Boogers. <laughs> Wonder Boogers? <Wonder Bookers? laughs> I bought enough Christmas tree lights to wire Manhattan. This display is for all the kids in Brookmont, which is my neighborhood, from the big kid who lives here. It's already four against one, you leave me alone! Every time I swear, I've got to put money in. You know, this is Bob's swear jar. Today, it's got a big 20 bucks. Just going in. <laughs> if you think about a day, in the course of a day, some kid's giving you a good smile, you, somebody's letting you line, something's good's happened to you, so those are things a bad day. Well, our team did an amazing job putting that together. There's so much that happened, and Greg is joining us from Texas to help us remember Bob. Greg, I don't know if you can see, but um, I have the swear, they, they have the swear jar. We still have it. Got all the money in here. There's a dollar and a lot of pennies in here, Greg. Yeah, the irony of it is you actually swore more than him. I know. Um, it's great to see, the, it's, it's great to see those clips because the one thing that was so interesting about Bob is that he was never going to tell you that he was in shape or in good health, but for somebody who wasn't in shape or in good health, he had more energy than anybody I knew. Like he was nonstop, even with his pretty bad diet and, uh, mm -hmm. and you know, his other things, but he could really, I mean, he, he and what you saw is what you got. Uh, he really was made for television. You felt like you knew him. I brought a clip to this because there was a time when, I had him on Red Eye with his brother, Graham Beckel, yeah. who's a tremendous actor, was in L.A. Confidential. And to see those two interact as brothers gave you an insight into what Bob was like as a family member. And I think we have it, don't we? Listen to this crap all the time. I mean, whatever it looks. You were an actor. You had to use food stamps, right? Oh, screw off. <laughs> Well, we're right in the same bloodstream. No, man, that's like so inappropriate. <laughs> I'm inappropriate? Yes, and you were inappropriate. in Charlotte, and that's inappropriate? You were at Woodstock, weren't you? Yeah, I was. I went to commit a homicide. <laughs> yeah. Graham, you, the one of the people who follow that tape, that, that's a cult movie? Could you imagine those people being together? They'd probably be the wedding party for Charles Manson. <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, man, there are so many memories. There's so I mean, many, Greg. And it's, it, we all knew... We all knew this day was going to happen. Mm -hmm. He was going to get there first. Mm -hmm. But, man, he packed in a lot of life. He was a complex character. He and I, when The Five started in July of 2011, he and I still lived in D.C. So we would be on the train back and forth with each other. And what, he was a brilliant political mind. You ask him anything about politics that happened in the, in the 70s and 80s, he'd tell you exactly what was happening. He had really good instincts on the trends that were going to take place. He used to scare all of us when he would scream, one more thing is up next. He said he hated dogs, <laughs> but he loved Jasper, called him his nephew. And I will never forget, 
One time we went to do a Hannity show in Atlanta, and he faked having a heart attack while we were live on air. Allison, were you oh, there, God. the stage manager? And he faked, and I thought yes. he was really having a heart attack, and I was panicking, and it was a joke that he played on me, which was one thing. Let's take it around yeah. the table a little bit quickly here, Greg. Jesse, you and Bob had an interesting relationship. I've never been given the finger by a nicer guy. <laughs> 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 he, uh, I didn't have a long overlap with him like uh, you guys obviously did, but uh, what a great dude. What great stories. Uh, we like to always say, you know, some of the best times on the five are in the commercial breaks, and Bob mm -hmm. in the commercial break was worse than Gutfeld. <laughs> And uh, we will miss him, and yeah. we love him, Martha, and we'll always remember him. You must have known Bob quite well. Yeah, I mean, Bob Bob was just a great guy, and as you say, he was just a wealth of information. He loved what we do. He loved politics. He loved talking about it. He loved arguing about it. And I used to love, he used to sit on a chair outside the by the studio out there, and he would just, like, sit out there on a nice day all day long. You come by and just strike up a conversation with you, and uh, we, we will miss him. What a great contribution he Harold, made did to you all know of us. Bob? I knew him. I knew him more as a, a Democratic operative. Uh, but I, I watched him on the show as well. And the great thing about that, a lot of great things and everything is everybody said a lot of wonderful things about him. He had a strong point of view. He was a good, loyal Democrat, but he loved the debate. He yeah, loved sure an did. open, fair debate. He'd give as good as he took. And then Jesse has told me, Jesse and I have had conversations, not about Bob, but just about life. He didn't take things personally. It never, it never seemed so. He had, a, he had, he was a faithful person. Pete, I'll give you a quick word, and I'll give one last one to Greg. But he was a faithful person. He was a man who battled addiction, and he was willing to talk about that. And he would spend, he'd get called at two o'clock in the morning to go help somebody who was maybe about to fall off the wagon. I can only come at it as a viewer, but in that sense, it's fun, always enjoyable watching somebody who's comfortable in their own skin. Mm -hmm. Clearly has a good soul. And as a viewer, you know, he's, he's a guy you actually did love to hate. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And remember, Greg, everybody would, would say to us, we think Bob's coming around. We think Bob's <laughs> going to become conservative. Yeah. <laughs> Last word to you, Greg. And, and, uh, and yeah, just, you know, he wrote a column, I guess, every week for years with Cal Thomas, mm -hmm. and you couldn't find a more conservative person, and I think that was the real secret to Bob's happiness was his ability to see people as people and not as political entities, and we, we somehow lost sight of that in the last couple of decades, I guess. Yeah, we learned a lot from him, so cheers to you, Bob. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Swear jar. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. One more thing is up next.